Hello, I'm Lawrence and I'm on a quest to uncover all of the memos that Britain and America lost in the pond and one of those memos pertains to dialects. Those of you who joined me for last year's Vlogmas may well remember that I did a video in which I took an online dialect quiz. The purpose of taking that quiz was to see which American dialect most closely aligned with my British one. I'll link back to that video at the end of this one, but today I want to take the quiz again. What's the point, most of you are probably thinking, has your dialect really changed at all in 2020? No, because I haven't spoken to anyone. When I took it last year, I answered truthfully to see if there really was an American dialect that was similar to mine. But this year, because I'm ever curious and constantly lose sleep over these things, I'd like to find out which American dialect is least like my own. Could it be yours? There's really only one way to find out. Let's take the quiz. All right, I remember this. How would you address a group of two or more people? You all, yous, you lot, you guys, you uns, yins, you, other, or y'all. I, I'm not gonna read out all of the answer choices and all of the questions, but in this case, I would say you lot. However, we're gonna go with the one that I'm least likely to say. And looking at these, I mean, I have been known on occasion to say some of these. I've never said yins, ever. So I think that's localized to a specific area, isn't it? So I'd say yins is the least likely one. Okay, next question. What do you call the insect that flies around in the summer and glows in the dark? We have lightning bug, firefly, uh, and then a few other options there. Peeny Wally, what is that? I do not remember this one. I have come to know it as a firefly, and I think that that's something that, even though we don't really have them in Britain, I would be more likely to say just because of the TV show Firefly. In terms of the other ones, I've never heard of Peeny Wally, and I think I'm going to have to go for that. I would have said pr probably I have no word for this, but Peeny Wally. Okay, how do you pronounce crayon? precisely like that, but the options are uh, with one syllable, so it rhymes with man, I just can't even think of a world in which that's possible. Uh, with two syllables, so it sounds like crayon, it's closer to that, with two syllables where the uh, second syllable rhymes with dawn, crayon, not really, sounds like crown, no, uh, I'd have to go with other if I was answering for myself, but I think the one that's most alien to me there, ironically, is man. So I'm gonna cl click that and then we will move on to the next one. What do you call it when rain falls while the sun is shining? I don't really, because I don't think we have a word for that in Britain, uh, but apparently some of the options we have here uh, are interesting, including the devil is beating his wife, uh, monkey's wedding. I think the one there that seems most unlike anything I would ever say is probably the devil is beating his wife. So I will go with that one. And then how do you pronounce caramel? Quite unusually, I think, compared to most people here in the Midwest. Uh, but the options with two syllables like caramel, uh, with three syllables, caramel, just as I did there. Um, and then some other options where both are used. I, it's very much caramel, so I won't answer that. I mean, I think the opposite has to be caramel uh, here. So I will definitely go with that. My wife has been known to say caramel on occasion, but I think she goes back and forth now. Probably my influence. What do you call a sweetened carbonated beverage? I call it a fizzy drink, so I'm not gonna answer with that one. And I've come to know it as pop here in the Midwest. Uh, some of the more alien ones to me are things like in the South where they call it Coke. Uh, to mean all pop, um, but tonic as well, being a kind of, was it a Massachusetts area uh, one, I think is the strangest one for me. Uh, I just think of gin and tonic, but that's tonic water. So I think I'd have to go with tonic looking. No, I take it back. The, the, there's dope right there. I've never heard anybody refer to this drink as dope. So dope and Coke. Think about that, people. All right, I'm gonna go with dope just because I've never heard of it and it seems a bit strange to me. How do you pronounce the second syllable in pajamas? Ah, I'll sing it if you like. It'd be a weird song, lyrically. Uh, with the vowel in jam or with the vowel in palm? Palm, pajamas, yes, and not others. So I would do palm. I'm obviously not gonna do that here. Pajamas, it feels weird to say that, I must say. So I suppose I'm, I'm definitely unlikely to do that. I will choose it here. Here's a, one with a lot of options. What do you call a traffic jam caused by drivers slowing down to look at an accident or other diversion on the side of the road? 
I don't think I have a word for that. I don't believe I do. And that is an option. That would be the option I choose ordinarily. The most opposite one that I can think of. I mean, look at these rubber neck, rubber necking. I've heard of those terms. Um, gapers block, gapers delay, looky loo, curiosity delay and gawk block. I don't, I mean, you know, some of these words like gapers and gawk are not really ones that are common in British English. So I suppose those would be the ones that stand out to me. And block, delay, I mean, I really don't know. At this point, you're clutching at straws. Um, I think I'll go with gapers block on that one. It, that sounds truly alien to me. And I, I suppose it does to most Americans. It's probably quite regional. So there's that. Okay, what would you call a sale of unwanted items in your porch, in your yard, etc.? Uh, for me, that was always a jumble sale. I used to do that as a child. Um, but the, the, there are options such as tag sale, yard sale, garage sale, rummage sale, thrift sale, stoop sale, carport sale, side, sidewalk sale. There's one for you because we just don't have the word sidewalk in Britain. So I'm, I think that's probably out of these, maybe the furthest away. Um, I don't know. Uh, yeah, looking at these, I would probably say that's true. I'm going to go with that. I'm going to go with sidewalk sale. Okay, uh, what do you call a large motor vehicle used to carry freight? Uh, the big one there, of course, for British people is lorry, which is what I used to be called as a child, short for Lawrence. Uh, yeah, that was just something my mum did and no one else is allowed. You're all going to start doing that now, aren't you? Anyway, so the options are semi, semi-truck, or semi, semi-truck, trailer, tractor, trailer, truck, transfer, truck, transfer. I, I said I wouldn't read all these out. What am I doing? I'm wasting precious time. Lorry is there. I'm obviously not going to put that. I have been known to say truck, though, even in Britain. Um, it's not that the word is alien there. 18-wheeler was always one of my favourite words growing up because I heard it in the movies and I wanted to drive one across the country. And then somebody who was a trucker said, no, nope, it's not fun, Lawrence. Don't pursue that line of work. And I didn't. I became a YouTuber. All right. So uh, out of these, probably... Uh, oh, look at that one. Rig. Big rig. I don't ever think of a truck as a rig. So I think I'm likely to choose that, honestly. There we go. I did it. Brave. What do you call the night before Halloween? I don't really. I have no word for this once again. But the options are gate night, trick night, mischief night, cabbage night, goosey night, devil's night, devil's eve, and other, and I have no word for this. Um, out of all of those other options there, I mean, hmm, goodness me, I don't want to use the devil again, you know, but then again, better the devil you know. So out of those two, devil's eve, devil's night, but again, devil sort of attaches to that idea that we dress up as monsters at Halloween and only monsters. And that's a, you know, we do that in Britain. You don't do it so much in the United States, whereas goosey night makes no sense to me. So maybe I would actually go with goosey night. I think I'm going to, don't judge me. I'm going to go with goosey night. I also hate cabbages, but that's another story for another day. Okay. Uh, what do you call the small gray bug that curls up into a ball when it's touched? There's a lot of options there. You can all read them. Uh, but some of them that stick out here, roly-poly, uh, woodlouse. But that's a, I think that's a different insect in Britain to the one that's being described here. At least I never knew those to be ones that curled up into a ball when they're touched. That's me. So, And I'm not a woodlouse. But then again, I'm neither of these things or none of these things. Uh, we've got twiddlebug. It's a, bit, it's a bit weird one. A centipede is something else. Surely it's something else. And it's not small either. I'm surprised that anyone would do that, um, or a millipede. Uh, so I think maybe millipede, just because it's got a thousand legs, it is long, um, and doesn't sound like this small grey bug at all. I would never call it that, but we do have millipede, so I'm very unlikely to do that. Don't know what a lot of these other things are. So millipede, you're in the bag. All right, what do you call the area of grass between the sidewalk and the road, all right? Uh, so we've got berm, parking, tree lawn, terrace, curb strip, beltway, verge. I have no word for this. I don't even, what is it talking about? Oh, I see what it's talking about. So it's literally that sort of bit of grass where there's trees and all of that. Uh, I don't, you know, I've never really had a name for it. I just call it sort of grassy area. I would, I mean, out of those, I have no word for this is what I would actually say. I think looking at this curb strip sounds really, beltway. Beltway sounds really American, and I just don't think that's a word we'd really 
use? Maybe we would. I mean, feel free to correct me. This is all being done with no research, so I'm, I'm just riffing here. But Beltway, I never even saw that word, I don't think, when I lived in Britain. So we'll go with that. What do you call something that is across both streets from you at an intersection or diagonally across from you in general? Uh, so you've got uh, these very much American derived words, kitty corner, kitter corner, catter corner, catty corner, kitty cross. This is my favorite, kitty wampus. Um, or I would, only, I would use only diagonal for this. I have no term for this. I think I would probably say diagonal from. Uh, in terms of my own reaction to this. Uh, the one I'm least likely to say out of all of these things, I mean, they're all sort of derivatives of each other, I suppose, but um, Kitty Wampus, I think I'm unlikely to say, just because every time I do, I actually end up saying Kitty Wampus, and then I get corrected by people who legitimately use that term, say, saying that I'm pronouncing it wrong, and I just feel like an idiot. So I'm not going to ever really use that term again. So I think on this, on this uh, particular quiz, I'm going to go with Kitty Wampus and hope that I got the pronunciation okay. What do you call an easy high school or college class? And there's a few options here. A gut, a crip course, crip course, bird, blow off, meat or other. I don't think I even have a word for it. Just easy is what I would say. So probably other in this case would be my uh, actual answer. I don't, I mean, we certainly wouldn't say blow off. That has a completely different meaning where I come from, and I'm not willing to get into that because I don't want to be demonetized. But blow off is probably what I would say here. I think I would go with that. That's the, the, the one I'm least likely to do. Uh, so blow off it is. There we go. Uh, just don't judge me. All right, what do you call the long sandwich that contains cold cuts, lettuce, and so on? I've got plenty of options because I know that the United States in general does. Um, I mean, actually, the, the, the option there, sarni, is a word that's in use in the United Kingdom just to mean sandwich in general. So I'd probably default to that if any of these. Uh, but looking at the rest of them, I don't know. I mean, certainly not hoagie. I know that that's uh, a regional term. I may also say sub. Uh, bomber, never heard of that one. Poor boy. I probably poor boy. I don't want to imagine my food as, a, as an undernourished boy. That would be stress. So poor boy is probably what I'm going to go with. Poor boy it is. All right. Uh, what do you call a big road on which you drive relatively fast? Highway, freeway, parkway, turnpike, expressway, throughway th or throughway. A freeway uh, is bigger than a highway and a freeway is free. Doesn't charge tolls. A highway. It's getting very pedantic now, this quiz. I don't really have, I wouldn't answer with any of those. Motorway is most likely what I would have said in Britain. Since moving to the US, I mean, I've come to say highway quite a lot. Turnpike's one. Yeah, that's a word you see here in the US a lot, but not so much in Britain. Um, so I'd probably go with that or throughway or parkway. This is a tough one, actually. I mean, it could, I could go either way. Um, I suppose where I live, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd go with turnpike, I think. That's just a sort of wild stab in the dark, and I feel a bit uneasy about that. What do you call the rubber-soled shoes worn in gym class or for a athletic activities? I would call them trainers, where I come from. Uh, so again, we're not going to put that. The one that I'm least likely to say out of these, it's, it's a tough one. I see the option there, jumpers. That's a little weird, where I come from, because jumpers, of course, is it's a thing you wear, a top. A sweater, as you would say. Uh, so I'm definitely wildly unlikely to say that. So I'm going to go with jumpers just for that reason. Uh, we like to, you know, differentiate between different types of clothings if, the, if there's a similar word that comes up like that. What do you call a traffic situation in which several roads meet in a circle? I call it a roundabout. And I can't imagine, I can't imagine a world in which people don't have a word for roundabouts. That just, it seems odd to me. Um, but I suppose there are locations where those just don't exist. So I have no word for this would be the most unlikely. Although rotary, uh, which I understand is used sort of in the northeast, I think. Um, I don't know, seems a little weird too. But not having a word for it is the most unusual out of all of these options. For me, where I come from. We love our roundabouts. I even slept on one once. I won't get into that. Okay, what do you call a drive-through liquor store? I don't know. Heaven, probably. 
Sorry, uh, brew through, party barn, bootlegger, beer barn, beverage barn. We have these in my area, but we have no special term for them. I've never heard of such a thing or other. We don't have them. I mean, I've never, I don't think I've ever been to one of these. Um, brew through, I mean, the spelling there as well of through is just so American. It's not something I would ever have uh, written uh, in the UK. Um, although, you know, props on the rhyme. I think probably brew through out of all of those. Yeah, I'm going to go with brew through. Just for that reason. Uh, what do you call the large wild cat native to the Americas? So we've got uh, mountain lion, uh, cougar, puma, or puma. Uh, mountain cat, panther, uh, catamount. I've never heard of that one. Mountain screamer, painter, or other. Jeez. Um, out of all of those, I do not know. I mean, I think I'm unlikely to use that word catamount since I've just never heard of it. I th and that's the other thing I've heard of all the others, except for Mountain Screamer, but it's sort of self-explanatory. Uh, so I'm going to go with Catamount, I think. All right, we're d down to just four more questions. How do you pronounce aunt? I extend the vowel sound there, but uh, here are some of the options. The top one is just as I did it there. I am a little sort of at odds just in the, in the sense that I can't really picture this with somebody saying it using the vowel in court. Like if I tried that, it would just sound like aunt. It just sounds odd, doesn't it? So I can't really picture that. Um, and then, and also, I have the same vowel in the word are, caught, and aren't. Unbelievable. That That is certainly alien to me. That would never happen in my household. I can tell you that. What, right, Tara? I mean, you don't, do you do it? We'll practice that later. All right, so I'm going to go with that. Okay, great. And then uh, what do you call the thing from which you might drink water in a school? And you've got bubbler, water bubbler, drinking fountain, water fountain or other. Drinking fountain is what I would say, or water fountain. You know, I'd go back and forth. Bubbler, which I know is, is unique to a couple of places, Wisconsin being one of them, and I think up in the Northeast as well, as I recall. Uh, water bubbler, I suppose, is sort of a similar um, iteration of that. I, it would have to be one of those for sure. I think just because I'm more familiar now with the word bubbler from doing these things and just talking about it, maybe I'm, I'm more of a convert to it than I was. I, I'm not really familiar with anybody saying water bubbler. Those people are very formal and they're probably also from Wisconsin. I'm going to go with water bubbler on that. Of course, I'm pronouncing it differently as well to how anyone would say water in the U.S., and then uh, we're down to the final two. What is the distinction between dinner and supper? Supper is an evening meal. Dinner is an, uh, eaten earlier. Supper is an evening meal, but dinner is the main meal. And that's kind of where I would put it. I think that's the use that I, I most align it with. Um, so I'm not going to choose that, obviously. I don't, I don't use the word supper as an option there. There is no distinction. They both have the same meaning. I'd probably have to go with that one because they're definitely different. But my mother-in-law in Indiana definitely uses those two words interchangeably. Uh, so I'm going to go with that one. There is no distinction. And then the final question, what do you call the area of grass in the middle of some streets? You've got boulevard, midway, traffic island, island, neutral ground. I have no word for this. Median or other. I don't really have a word for it or not one that I was very familiar with when I lived in Britain. Out of all of these, I mean... Boulevard and Midway are very American words, I think, in terms of use in the English language. I would have to probably go with one of those. And I think I'm going to choose Boulevard. I love the word. Don't get me wrong. I just don't really use it very often. Uh, so that's that. And so without further ado, let's take a look to see which of these American dialects aligns least with my own. Well, this is interesting, isn't it? Because it's put me kind of in the neck of the woods that I sort of live. Rockford, Illinois being not too far from Chicago. But you've also got Milwaukee in there and Grand Rapids. I suspect this is because of my answer, water bubbler. But it could be a lot of those other things. And when I think about it, I'm not really too surprised that this is the region that least aligns with my dialect. Because these regions have been heavily influenced by German and Scandinavian immigrants over the years. 
and that line of ancestry is at one with weather that is unfit for humans, whereas I'm not and I think they know it. So there you have it. Feel free to take the quiz and let me know how you did. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel so that my videos don't get lost in the pond. A big shout out to all of my patrons who make these videos possible. If you would like to become a patron of Lost in the Pond, you can do so at patreon.com slash lost in the pond. Until next time, goodbye. I didn't get this at the brew through. <laughs>